There's a bunch of cool stories in Hebrews 11. Um, they're regular people. They're, they're not extraordinary, but their stories are extraordinary. They were a bunch of ordinary people who um, God lit their heart and their life on fire, asked them to do something that was way out of, for most of them, their comfort zone or any experience they'd ever had. And, uh, but it was something God desired to do on the planet. And um, it was gonna be something that would bring astronomical change over time. Um, we'd call it kingdom advance, God's kingdom coming to earth through ordinary people. Um, and, and not all of them even saw the result of what they did. Then you flip over to chapter 12 and it says, you know, therefore, since we're surrounded by this great cloud of witnesses who they ran their own race, it says that we're supposed to kick off things that would be in our way and run the race marked out for us and we're to fix our eyes on Jesus. A couple quick things about that that are important for you to know. If you're gonna fix your eyes on Jesus, that means you have to take your eye off yourself. Sometimes your worst enemy is you. You, you, you think about all the stuff you're not, all the stuff you've done that you think is ah, uh, all, all the stuff that you get so discouraged or bummed out about you that you disqualify yourself for the race that's marked out for you. He didn't, you did. You did that. Get over yourself, come on. It says fix your eyes on Jesus, not on yourself. So would you please readjust your line of vision and raise your gaze and fix your eyes on the one who's got a race marked out for you and, and he wants you to get over you and get into fixing your eyes on him. He knows exactly how to coach you, develop you, strategically lead and guide and shepherd you for the race marked out for you. None of these were perfect people. They were all imperfect. They all had stuff God had to deal with. So first thing is get your eyes off yourself um, and, and also get your eyes off others. When, when Jesus said to Peter in John 21, you know, hey, I want you to follow me. And he'd said that three years earlier, but Peter's like off, he's fishing for fish again off a boat. I mean, he's just, he's gone AWOL on the race that was marked out for him. And um, Jesus says, why, why don't you follow me? I've, I've got stuff for you to do. Feed my lambs, take care of my sheep. I mean, it's stuff that's gonna matter in the long haul. You're gonna leave a legacy. And Peter looks around and he said, what about him, Lord? And he started doing the comparison thing. And um, that was the next thing. Get your eyes off others. Would you stop looking at so many others and either critiquing what's wrong with them or critiquing what's so superior about them that you, you know, who are you in, in light of them? Would you please just, Get your eyes off others and get your eyes on the one who, if you'll look at him, he knows how to help you run your race. And um, if you look at him on a regular basis, you might even get over your disappointment, not just with yourself, your disappointment with others. And, and you might just find a cadence and a rhythm on the race that's marked out for you. The tip was fix your eyes on Jesus. He believes in you. He loves you. He forgives you. <laughs> everything you need for life, everything you need to, to keep running the race, it's all in Him. It's all in Him. So my encouragement for you today is there is a race. There's a life to be lived on purpose. There's a heart to be kept ignited on fire. And He can take care of all of that. If you'll take care of one thing, fix your eyes on Him.